Liner locks and frame locks. What are they? How do they work? How do they differ? Which one is better? Well, I have three of each right here to show you, so let me explain very briefly what a liner lock is. I have videos on what these are individually, so I can explain it in more detail if you are willing to watch those first. But basically, a liner lock, like we have on this Spyderco Resilience lightweight right here, is a cutout in one of the liners in the knife that is bent forward or bent to the right if it is facing you anyway. It's just bent. It's bent more than what you see here, but because the tang of the blade stops it in place once it gets stopped by the stop pin, it becomes engaged. It would be bending further if we took this knife apart, but that's where it stops currently because the tang of the blade is in the way. And if you look very closely, the tang of the blade is also on a slant. So the more you use this, the more it wears, the more the liner will move in that direction until it reaches the very end. It takes years and years, very, very, very long time for that to ever happen. Even if you open and close your knife and use it all the time, it'll last a very, very long time. Again, it's just a cutout in the liner that is bent in a certain direction that stops the knife from closing on you. And the knife cannot move any further. It cannot over-travel because there is a stop pin. Very simple design very fast. You can engage and disengage the knife very easily with one hand. What retains the knife in place is not so much the lock itself, but rather the ball bearing detent in the lock. If you look very closely, right there. See that little bead that's just beneath the tang? Now it's gone. Now you see it. That is the ball bearing detent. That's kind of almost like a half stop right there. The lock did not engage yet, but it kind of gives it a little bit of time. Then it engages when that space fully clears. The ball bearing detent is designed to keep the blade in place when it is closed as well. So it doesn't shake out very easily. If you really try, like if I whip it out on camera, or off camera, I should say, then you can get it to work. But that keeps it closed. It doesn't open up too easily. So that is the liner lock. So now what is a frame lock? Let's grab this Boker Dark Hollow right here. Exact same concept, only instead of the liner of the knife, we are using the frame itself. There's a cutout in it, and it is bent in this direction that will accommodate the knife when it is in the open position to keep it locked in the open position. Now you might be asking, well, where's the stop pin on that one? The stop pin on this knife's inside of it. I can't show you, but it's the same exact thing. It's just inside of a track that's cut out in the tang of the blade, which stops it from over-traveling. Same concept. Uh, this knife, there's a stop pin right there. That's a frame lock. Here's another frame lock. Stop pin. This Boker Dark Hollow also has a stop pin. It's just an internal stop pin. But I'm showing you this one first because there is no lock bar stabilizer on this one. What's that? I'll get to that in just a minute here. So same exact concept, but because this knife does not have a liner on its left side right here, the frame itself is moving in place. That's literally the only difference between the liner lock and the frame lock. One is the frame, one is the liner. As you can see right there. So which one's better? Eh. Most people argue the frame locks are stronger, not so much by design, but more just because they're thicker. Frames tend to be thicker than liners on knives. If you somehow had a knife that had liners that were as thick as the frame locks, <laughs> frames that lock the knife in place, liner locks would probably be just as strong as frame locks in a lot of ways. But simply just because frame locks happen to be thicker, generally speaking, they're considered stronger. Another thing that a lot of people consider them stronger for is the fact that your grip enforces the lock in place as well. Unlike, again, going back to the Spider Co., no matter how hard I grip this, I'm not really touching the liner or enforcing its grip at all. I'm touching the handle scales here, which are in the way of the liner. Frame locks, you are touching that locking mechanism itself, and as you clench down, you're pressing down on it, and as you press down on the lock, you're pushing it further and further into the tang of the blade, which locks it in the open position. So your grip enforces the lock itself. You could consider it a little bit safer as far as, far as trying to keep the knife locked, but as far as safety goes, if it's somehow disengaged on you as you were holding it, it might be a little bit more dangerous. Not like it's going to kill you or anything, but it might pinch you a little bit. Ow, because you're touching the liner. Or sorry, touching the frame right there. Sorry. These are liners. Liner locks. These are frame locks right here. They're pretty close, though. They lock the same. The detents on them feel the same. It just it depends more on who made the knife, what the materials are, what the heat treatment is, what the geometry of the knife is, what the timings are. It depends on that more so than just the locking mechanism itself as far as strength goes. I've had really crappy weak frame locks and I've had some really, really tough ass liner locks. It just depends on who's making them and how it is made, not so much the locking mechanism itself, but they're both cool. I think I like frame locks a little bit more just because they're more technical looking. You can see the lock itself. It's not quite as hidden underneath the knife. 
And I, I do like how your grip itself helps enforce it in the open position. That's kind of helpful. But it's really not a big deal. I just think frame locks are a little bit cooler, but they're both great. They work pretty much exactly the same. They flick out just as fast. But again, it depends on who's making it and how it was made. And like I said earlier, this is a lock bar stabilizer right here. It's literally just a hunk of material. This one happens to be stainless steel with the stone wash finish on there that mimics the rest of the frame. That gets in the way. It obstructs the path of the frame so it cannot be overextended. Like this one, like most older frame locks, not that this knife's too old, but if I were to push this, I could push this further with my thumb if I wanted to pass the position it's supposed to go in. Right here, there's nothing stopping it. I literally could just push and push and push it and bend it out of place. If that happened, it would ruin it, but you could open the knife back up, move the frame away from the rest of it, bend it back in place more forward, then close it back up. You could fix it that way. That actually happened to me with this knife once. I was just testing something. Long story. But with lock bar stabilizers in the way, you cannot do that. Essentially, this acts like the handle scale in the way of the liner when it comes to a liner lock. As you can see right there, you can't possibly bend the liner out of place because the handle scale is acting as the lock bar stabilizer. Frame locks, though, for the longest time, they did not have them, but more recently, I don't know if it's the longest time now, maybe half of their lifetime or so, they didn't have them. But more recently, like within the last 10 years, I want to say 10, 11 years ago, these started getting more popular and coming out. One more I wanted to show you right here is the CRKT Buku. Uh, where's the lock bar stabilizer on it? I can't bend it out of place. Well, if you look closely at that screw, this is known as an internal lock bar stabilizer. It's the same exact concept, only the piece of material that obstructs the lock from bending out of place is simply inside of the knife and you can't see it from the outside. But if you look very closely, you can see through the little slit right there, a little piece of metal that's just blocking it. It's the exact same concept as the external lock bar stabilizer, only it's inside of it. This is a cleaner, more elegant look. It's really cool. I like them both equally. I like both the external and the internal lock bar stabilizers on the frame locks. I don't like it when they do not have them though. Some people argue, yeah, well, you don't need them because your brain tells you not to overextend it. Yeah, that's true, but look, what's stopping me? If I was crazy, I could literally just go whoop and just ruin it with my bare hands. Not a very strong design right there overall. But no, I know common sense will tell you otherwise, but whatever. Look at a couple more liner locks right here. Cold Steel Tie Light 4-inch X. This one just has a, kind of like a beefy uh, surface area right here that makes contact with the tang, which probably strengthens it up just a little bit. Really strong for a liner lock anyway, but it's still a liner lock. And then finally, Boker S2. Again, same deal. We have G10 handles right here, but then liner lock in there. I like them both. Again, I think I like frame locks just a little bit more, but they both work. They're both cool. Frame locks are, again, going to be a little bit stronger simply because they're thicker, generally speaking, and because your grip itself helps give them in the open position. But again, by design, they're not necessarily any stronger than liner locks. They're equally as strong by design. It's more about the materials and how thick they are themselves. So anyway, that is it. Liner locks and frame locks. That's another excuse to show you some more of my knives. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. And if you didn't learn anything, hope you got some entertainment nonetheless. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more knife reviews, more knife videos, locking mechanism videos, etc. Have a great day. Or night.